We're going to make a, a sautéed uh, Cornish hen. And then we're going to have a bed of wild rice. And all the vegetables, what you see here, mixed into the wild rice. And the Cornish hen sitting over it. And then deglazing the pan that the hen is in with some marsala and a drop more of uh, chicken stock. Not a sauce, just thin au jus. So first thing is going to be to cook the wild rice in the chicken stock we have in the back there. And while that's going on, you have sufficient time to dice up all the vegetables and get everything together and so start to saute the uh, hen and finish the hen in the oven or on top of the stove. And what we're putting together here is uh, cr dried cranberries, not craisins, toasted almonds, fresh garlic clove, celery, carrot, zucchini, onion, fresh basil, red pepper, yellow pepper, and a nice uh, marsala, dry marsala to give it a flavor at the end there. This should be very good. First thing we do is to dice up that one piece of bacon. And this will be the uh, grease that will cook the hen. If you're opposed to the bacon and the flavor it gives off, that's no problem. Just put a little olive oil in there and eliminate the uh, the bacon. So first what we have to do is season the Cornish hen. This is semi boneless. The ribs have been taken out. The only thing left on the bone is the uh, leg and the thigh and a little piece of the wing. And a little black pepper. Turn it over and do the same on the other side. Now I just push the bacon to the edge so the Cornish hen doesn't sit on it. And we'll start cooking it with the uh, skin side down. And this, we're going to go with a low flame. I'm cooking this on top of the stove completely. And This will take a little while, so we don't want anything really black in the pan, we just want this to cook. And it will certainly pick up color, guaranteed, just by the amount of time that it's going to be sitting in the pan. So there's the flame, not too high. And we'll start it off without covering it, and then I'm going to cover it and let it cook. No liquid's going to go in there. It's almost like roasting it on top of the stove. And meanwhile, in the rear, we have the rice, the wild rice boiling, and just put a little salt in with the chicken stock. Now you can either make the wild rice very firm or very soft. It's your preference. While this is going on, now we'll get all the vegetables cut up and ready to cook in another skillet. And then we're going to add the cooked wild rice to the vegetables. And by, by the time this is all done, maybe the Cornish hen, the timing is correct, so it all comes together. This has been cooking for about 10 minutes. We're going to turn it over. Now I'm going to cover it and put it on an even lower flame. And then get ready to saute the vegetables. So we're going to saute the vegetables with a little olive oil 
because that's enough bacon for flavor that we have there. Notice that the, uh, the diced vegetables aren't that small because this is really our vegetable going with the rice and I want the vegetables to be a little larger than the uh, grains of wild rice. And while this is sautéing, always season everything, a little salt, a little pepper, and the rest of the items that are sautéed, the zucchini, red and yellow pepper, and the basil. The basil will be folded in at the very end, and since the carrots and celery and onions take much longer to cook than the zucchini and peppers, these take about the same amount of time. So we saute this, and when they're just about done, we'll throw these two items in, and they only take a minute to cook. So this is sauteing, and all you have to do is just moderate flame, not too high. We're not looking for color. If you want to raise the flame and make everything brown, you can. But that's not what I'm looking for on this. So just cook this until you see that the uh, onions are translucent. And then that'll be ready. We'll add the peppers and the zucchini. Well, the uh, Cornish hen, as you can see, is cooking nice and slow. We don't want anything to burn, but we want, we want it to cook throughout. And the rice in the rear, that's still cooking. So my timing is a little off because the rice takes longer than the Cornish hen. So I should have started that earlier. Could have started the rice very early, had it cooked and drained, and just wait. And then mix it into the vegetables. That would be no problem. To help the vegetables cook the carrots a little bit more, we'll just cover it. And now it'll take just a few minutes. And that Cornish hen's been cooking for 25 minutes. We're going to remove it from the pan. And pour off the grease that's in there. Because we don't want this, the bacon to be too strong over everything. Replace the Cornish hen which is not cooked yet. The bacon stays, but we got rid of most of the grease. And now, we put the marsala and let that really soak in to finish cooking. And along with the uh, marsala, we'll put chicken stock. This is going to cook down and give us just a little bit juice in the pan. Cover it again. Back over to the vegetables. See how they're doing. Take a carrot and check the carrot. Let's cook. Now add the zucchini. And the peppers. A little more salt. And pepper. And when this is mixed with the rice, it's going to make a beautiful bed to sit that uh, Cornish head on. This will take like uh, two minutes. I like my vegetables a little bit al dente. Peppers take no time to cook, either does the zucchini. 
Then after the rice goes in, we're going to add the basil to this. Let that uh, basil flavor infuse into the vegetables. And while that's cooking, we go back over here to the Cornish hen. And all I'm going to do is just turn it. And now we'll add the basil to the uh, vegetables. And this should be like smell-o-vision because the aroma is coming off of the, the vegetables and the hen with the wine and the stock. It's going to be nice. The cranberries. And lastly will be the rice with the almonds. And this is a lot. And this is this is your meal. This is your vegetable and your uh, protein. Cornish hen, gluten free also. So this is done. Now we're going to wait for the rice to finish and the hen. Forty-five minutes later, and the Cornish hen is ready. And by putting the wine and the stock in the pan, see the pan is clean. All the, all the flavoring that was in there from the Cornish hen is now in the juice. We've deglazed the pan. The rice is just about ready. The wild rice should not be soft and soggy. It have, should have just a little chew in it. So now we strain it. And this is only enough for one portion. If you must have your rice soggy, then go ahead and cook it until it's to that point. But I like, not that it's crunchy, but that it's firm. Just when the, the rice starts to open up a little bit, as you see. Everything here is hot. Everything has been seasoned. And now we'll put it on the plate and see how it looks. That's plenty. Take that Cornish hen. And a little bit of juice that's left in there is enough. Because you have the moisture from all the vegetables to have with the Cornish hen and it won't be dry. How's that? In about two minutes I'm going to taste it. For me it's too hot. Whoops! We forgot something. The toasted almonds. Now that it's cooled down a little, let me get some of this. I'll start on the thigh, which is the thickest. It takes the longest to cook. Mm-hmm. I'm going to sit down right now. Enjoy this Cornish ham. And I hope you do too. Mmm.